Hello wonderful people, I'm Jerry Travis Smith and this is going to be video one in my Introduction to Excel video series. I'm actually going to post project files on jerry.education but you'll be able to find the exact URL to those files in the description below this video. This little project is going to be a spreadsheet for a lemonade stand that has four different locations and it tracks sales data across four different weeks. So you basically, are, basically have 16 points of data. And the owners want to put the data into Excel and get some summary statistics such as uh, total sales, average, highest sales, lowest sales by location and by week. So we're going to set this up. Now in this particular video we're not going to do a lot of formatting. Everything's going to be uh, kind of plain and there's going to be a few things such as the date that doesn't really look the way we want it to look but we're going to focus on the formatting and making this look nice in video number two. So without further ado let's get started. Now, the first thing we want to do in our um, little spreadsheet here is actually put a, um, a title at the top of the sheet. So in cell A1, and let's give this a nice little uh, um, a title here. And we'll make up a name for the business. And we're just going to call this So Sweet Lemonade Stand Sales. Like so. Now in Excel, all you got to do um, whenever you're putting in data is type it in and press enter. You can also use the right and left arrow keys or tab. But I'm going to hit enter and that'll jump us down to the second um, line. So the name of our business is So Sweet Lemonade Stands. Okay. Um, <clears throat> now we're going to put a date in it because whenever you're dealing with sales data, you usually want to know um, what your time frame is because it's usually time based you can do snapshots but we're gonna go uh, on a time base here so uh, I'm gonna assu assume we're doing August 2016 now watch what happens when I press enter oh dear that is hideous we don't like that uh, and the reason being is if you go up here and look even though we topped in August 2016 Excel converted this to a date format and on top of that, it even had the presentation format look like this. And I'll show you how to fix that later. Now let's actually start laying this out. Um, we're going to do it. We're going to have a location. And now I'm going to press tab to move left to right in these cells. Okay. And we're going to have week one, week two, week three, and week four. And there's actually a really quick way we could do this and I'll go ahead and show you that now instead of topping it out like I just did we can do week one and week two okay and if you highlight both like so and you go to this little square over in the corner of the the selection box here you can drag this over and it creates a pattern and Excel knows hey we want to have the word week and we want to increase it by one each time so that's how you do a um, a pattern fill or a series fill as Excel officially calls it okay now it didn't make a lot of sense to do that for just four cells but imagine if we had 15 or 20 cells that we needed to fill like that how awesome that would be if we could um, fill several weeks just by highlighting the first two to create a pattern and then dragging so now let's start putting in our data here um, so we'll go with the locations first. We got Oak Street, Main Street, Maple Avenue. Um, ooh. Hmm. Well, there's not four locations. There's just three. I counted it wrong, and you'll see how I did that here in a minute. Okay. So now let's start plugging in the actual numbers for the sales that they had uh, during these weeks. Okay, and um, I'll be honest with you, I made these up whenever uh, I was coming up with this assignment or this video, this is an assignment. 
Sorry, it's a foursome habit. Um, but you can either follow along with me here, and the best way to do that would be to, uh, when I get it all typed in, pause the video and just plug it in, or you can kind of cheat and get the unfinished project file in the description below, and I don't blame you if you want to do that. Uh, but this is good practice for putting in uh, the uh, data. Okay, and notice whenever I hit enter, it jumps down to the next row. Okay, and these are rows here, and these are columns. Okay, and the intersection between those is called a cell reference. Okay, the intersection between those is called a cell reference. But when you hit enter, it'll jump down from to the next row and go to the first empty column in that row. And really I wouldn't have to be putting in these uh, dollar signs. Okay, we could actually do that uh, later. And you can see I'm having a really hard time for some reason getting those in there properly. I could edit this and make it just so pristine, but uh, guess what? I'm human, so uh, you can just bask in the glory of my ineptitude. Okay, so here is our data set. Not a whole lot to it, really. Okay, um, but these are the sales data. Okay, notice a few things, and I keep pointing out these formatting problems, but if it were me watching this video and somebody was doing it and this stuff wasn't... Uh, lined up a certain way or whatever I would notice so I want to point out to you that I too notice that there's some issues here notice how that we have week one week two week three and week four these are all aligned to the left and the numbers below them are aligned to the right and that's the way it's supposed to go um, by default but we're actually gonna fix that a little bit later on in the second video so don't worry, don't panic that this looks bad, because I know it does. Um, believe me, you just have to trust me, we're going to make it look real pretty um, in the next video. So now let's add some uh, summary um, statistics here. So I want the total for each location over the month of August 2016. And I'm also going to do the total by week in August 2016 so this is really simple what we're gonna do is we click in the cell where we want this sum is basically what it is we're gonna be adding up these four numbers but click in the cell where you want to do adding that up and I'm gonna hit this auto sum button just right here notice that Excel puts in a formula right here this is a formula starts with an equal sign and we're going to learn about that uh, in probably video three or four uh, but we're going to start out with an equal sign and the word sum which is the function name then there's a set of parentheses okay inside of the set of parentheses there is a range that starts with the first cell that we want to select in this range which is B4 and remember this is a reference B4 and it intersects right there okay and then there's a colon and then there is the second cell in the range and what Excel does is it goes from starting cell to ending cell of the range and you can see it's color coded the range is this bluish color so is the selected area and just so you know and because I like to say it these little guys uh, dancing around here this little marquee that's called marching ants because it looks like ants marching isn't that fantastic but I digress. I'm, I'm sorry. Everybody probably doesn't get uh, so excited about marching ants, but believe me, I do. Okay, so, um, and to make it give us the sum of these four numbers, I'm going to press enter. Okay, so what this is telling us is for uh, the month of August 2016, the Oak Street location had $963 in sales. Okay, now, we could go down here 
and go to the second row, hit auto sum again, same thing. And Maple Street, we could do the same thing. Okay, now watch what happened though. Here's a problem. Okay, Excel tries to be smart. And with the first two, it assumed that we were going to do a row for our range. But whenever we got down to Maple Avenue, there was actually two numbers stacked on top of one another. By default, Excel figures you want to add a column of numbers instead of a row of numbers. So in this case, it was really uh, not very smart. So to fix this range, what I'm going to do is click on the first cell and hold and just move over to the last cell, so B6 to E6. And by the way, you could type these in and get the same exact um, selection by typing in B6 colon E6 on the keyboard, but I very rarely ever do that unless I'm dealing with a massive data set where clicking and holding would be uh, not so convenient. Okay, So if Excel tries to guess at what you're wanting to sum, and you'll see there's going to be some more problems when we get an average, a highest, and a lowest. Uh, but if it, if it tries to guess and gets it wrong, then um, you can always override it. Because remember, computers are so stupid. They only do exactly what we tell them. They appear to be smart because they can do things like adding these numbers up in lightning speed. But really, they're really, really stupid. So don't be fooled by that. Okay? Now... I'm going to actually highlight these two cells and press delete on the keyboard and you're probably and delete actually will clear out whatever's in the cells by the way. Backspace does not clear out a selected um, bunch of cells. Okay, and notice when I'm selecting cells that I'm real careful to click in the middle of the cell and click and drag. Okay, if you click over on the side uh, while you have this four-headed arrow, that's going to move whatever's in here. You know, and sometimes you may want to move it, but more often than not, that's not really what you're concerned with. Okay, so basically, the reason I deleted this stuff out is to show you another one of these lovely shortcuts. Okay, you got this little fill handle here, and we already used it whenever we selected a pattern and dragged it across to, to do week one, two, three, four automatically. Um, but if you have a cell with a formula in it and you want to fill that formula down, uh, you just go over to the fill handle and click and hold and I'm going to drag straight down and let go. And there you go. Okay. Um, we have basically just filled down that formula and the way that Excel works when you fill a formula, notice what happened to my reference. Okay. My first reference was B4 to E4, which is this. And, and by the way, if you double click in the um, cell with a formula in it, it'll go back to formula view and it makes it really easy to see your ranges and all that good happy stuff. Okay, so if I double click on the main street total, you'll see that whenever it copied it down, Excel was smart and it said, okay, this formula started out in this row and if we're going to copy it down one row, which is what we did here, uh, we're going to shift this from um, B4 to B5 and E4 to E5. So you end up with B5 to E5 for the second row that we copied down. Same thing for the third. It just moved it two rows down from where we started. Okay, that's called a relative reference. Whenever you copy it and it um, updates itself depending on where you are in relation to uh, where you started copying from and where you ended up, okay? Because it's going each row, it's going to uh, update this. Oh, and I messed up this um, formula by uh, clicking on something while it was highlighted to get out of edit mode without saving your changes. Because right now I've totally fouled this formula up. I'm just going to press Escape on the keyboard. Okay, so there we go. We've got those totals. Now it may seem like it took me a while to get this done. But in all honesty, if I weren't talking and explaining it, this would be lightning fast. I mean, I, I, anybody that has used Excel for a while could get all of this done in 10 seconds. Okay, now let's get our totals for um, each week. And this is not by location, this is by week. Same thing, going to go auto sum. Okay, and 
just so you know, I'm not going to do it one at a time. Since you guys know how to do that already, uh, we can click and drag straight across. Okay. But guess what? As is usually the case, there is a quicker way. Okay. We can copy it across the way I already showed you. But watch this. This is fantastic. I'm going to highlight all this and delete it out. Now, if I would have highlighted this first and then clicked auto sum, Excel says, okay, they clearly want to sum the columns. Okay. Bam. And either way, you get the same result. And honestly, that one is the same exact amount of work as what we did a minute ago. But I could do it here and then copying it over. Because either way, you had to click and drag your mouse that far. But you guys may not be the type of people that efficiency keeps you awake at night. But for me, I am. Um, <laughs> but either way you want to do that is fine and dandy. It doesn't matter. You get the same result either way. And right here, we could have gotten this number here either by adding the column or by adding the rows okay really wouldn't matter you're gonna get the same uh, amount each time okay so that was easy All right we auto summed uh, the rows and the columns and got our totals by location and by week okay so now let's get the average um, for each uh, location so I'm going to type average, and really it doesn't matter what you type up here. This isn't going to influence whether it gives you an average or not. I could literally type Kermit the Frog here, and as long as I use the right formulas down here, it's going to give me the average. But the Kermit the Frog thing doesn't really make a lot of sense. Okay, I'm, I'm just being honest. Okay, <laughs> so I'm going to hit the drop down here and go to average. Okay. And Excel tries to be smart, but it's not smart. Again, it doesn't know any better because it's trying to average the four weeks and the total. Now, when you're calculating an average, you don't want the total in there because the total itself is just another summary statistic, and you don't want that added in. So I just need to readjust my uh, range to point at the right cells. I just clicked in the middle of the cells or of the first cell and then drag to the right and then let go and now you press enter and we have the average okay and whenever I double click on this little square and I don't know if I told you guys this yet or not you don't have to click and drag down to fill it in you can but um if you just double click it knows what you want to do now in this case it was kind of smart it did not go down to the total because getting the average of a uh, total line uh, may not make a lot of sense because it's like wait a minute um, you know what why would I want to do that but maybe we do want to know the average um, per location per week so I'm gonna go ahead and add that in there and you can see all that did was was like that but Excel figured out hey wait a minute this row is a little bit different than the other rows maybe he didn't want to do that okay but the average that we earned per week works out to six hundred nineteen dollars and that may be kind of handy to know okay so now we want the highest uh, weeks worth of sales so you may have noticed if you're eagle-eyed if you go up here to the auto sum and hit the little drop down there was a max maximum in here which is the highest number in the range okay again Excel's not so smart so I'm gonna highlight only the four weeks and in case you're curious if this is working out or not it is because right here we've got 280 that was the highest sales at the Oak Street location so you always want to do a sanity check and make sure by verifying stuff by hand that uh, or not by hand, but verifying manually that um, it's given you what you expect it to give. So now I'm just going to double click and it will fill that down and I'll go ahead and fill this down one more. Okay, because the highest week um, out of the weeks 
was $687 across all the locations. Okay. And for prosperity's sake, I'm going to do the lowest sales numbers. And here we're going to hit the drop down. We're going to go to min for minimum. And remember, click in the middle of the sale and drag over. And there you go. If you don't click in the middle of the sale and you get the four headed arrow, it will move what you're doing. Or it'll move the sale contents, rather. Okay. So there we have generated our um, summary statistics quite easily. Okay. Let me point out something here that I just noticed that's probably driving some of you crazy. Wait a minute. The Maple Avenue's cut off. And that's because the word Maple Avenue went outside of the cell, which was all well and good until we put something here. And if the adjacent cell has something in it, it will truncate or cut off at the edge. Now, don't worry. The Maple Avenue text didn't actually go anywhere. Um, but, um, you know, we'll have to fix that in the second video. I don't know how many times I've said in the second video, but hey, that's life. Okay, so now let's generate a couple of charts real quick. Okay, and uh, doing charts is, is pretty easy, actually. Um, just like most other things in Excel, we usually start out with some range that indicates what data we're going to do. So I'm going to select from the word location over to week four and then down to the week four Maple Avenue cell. Okay, and the cell reference here would be A3 to E6. Okay, A3 to E6. To insert a chart, we're going to go to Insert. Okay. And you could go to Recommended Charts, and it's going to give you a list. But since we're learning here, it's best just to, to grab the one that you want so that you kind of know what's, what's available to you. Now, we're going to put two charts in here that show the same data in two different ways. Okay. Since this is a change over time sort of data set, because we're dealing with week one, two, three, four, some people would say you're better off to put a uh, line chart in because line charts or line graphs, whatever you want to call them, show changes over time. So I'm going to hit the drop down here and we're going to go to 2D line, two dimensional line chart. Okay. And before I even click anything, it gives me a preview of what this is going to look like. Now, we could do this one that doesn't have the data points um, indicated. This one actually shows the markers is what it, it's calling it, line with markers. So um, same data, just slightly different representation. We'll do the line with markers. Okay. And we're going to set a chart title here. And the easiest thing thing to do is normally just put whatever the you typed in as the title of the sheet in here so sweet lemonade stand sales for well actually we're not going to do four I'm going to press enter August 2016 okay so we've got that topped in and when you're done you just click off uh, somewhere and there's your little title now there's all kinds of stuff we can do with this chart, but I'm not going to do that now because this is a uh, basic intro to Excel video. Suffice it to say, remember all we did was select a range, go to insert chart, and then give it a title. Since we set the spreadsheet up properly, okay, all of these um, data labels for the um, vertical axis and the horizontal axis were uh, correct already okay so um, that's just something you learn with practice and I've done hundreds if not thousands of spreadsheets in my life so um, you'll figure out kinda how to set things up to get it to look the way you want without doing a lot of work and uh, people that use Excel and programmers and everybody else are lazy so uh, they design these things so that you can pull this off with a minimum amount of work and just for fun, we're going to add another chart type of the same type of data. Okay, so I'm going to select uh, my range starting at location, ending at the week four Maple Avenue sales. 
Same exact um, cell reference as before. Going to go to Insert and 2D Column Chart. Okay. And just kind of move it so that it is uh, pretty much in the same location. Now, there is a way that we can get this exactly lined up, but I'm not going to worry about that today. So if it's not exactly perfect, uh, you, you're just going to have to wait to another video. Okay, so sweet lemonade stand sales August 2016. Okay, and over here we have this little options panel that popped up. And uh, depending on what you're clicked on, the options change. And this is kind of something that was added in Office 2013, so you probably wouldn't have seen this in 2010 or prior. I'm just going to close it right there because, frankly, a lot of times it gets on my nerves. There's other ways to do it, and uh, I'm an old-school Excel user. I end up doing some of this stuff the old-school way. Some of the ways I'm going to show you may be old-school. And if you're watching this and you know a quicker way, then why are you watching an intro to Excel video? No, I'm just kidding. Feel free to uh, tell me what I did wrong in the comments. But that's going to wrap it up for our first um, intro to Excel video. I think it went rather well. Um, this is a very ugly spreadsheet. There's a lot we could do to make this a lot more appealing. Um, but um, that's what the second video and beyond are going to be for. So thanks a lot for watching. And again, you can get the project files for this in the description below this video. And you can subscribe to this channel to get a notification whenever video 2 has been created. Thanks a lot, guys. Have a great day.